Hey everybody. I've been tinkered around with different types of substrates and additives lately in an attempt to add a little bit of mineralization to my water, maybe a little bit of hardness to my water, but I don't want to affect the pH very much. And honestly, I don't really want to raise the hardness all that much. So we're not going to get into a lot of detail about exactly what I've been using and what I've been doing. We're going to save that for a different time. But I feel like I had a bit of a breakthrough in my own personal understanding about how pH and water hardness sort of interplay with each other. I've always sort of conflated hardness with elevated pH. You almost always have higher pH with harder water. And I know there are cases where you can have acidic water but still have very hard water I've just never really understood how or what scenario or circumstances you could have hard water but still have a low pH. And today I actually figured it out. And I've always kind of understood but never really fully grasped the idea that there's a difference between calcium and the carbonates. Because typically when we have hard water, we think about hard water, that water gets hardened by calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate is a very common uh, substance. We find it in any kind of limestone, crushed coral, eggshells, oyster shells, marble, all sorts of stuff is, lime, is, is calcium carbonate. And that's what elevates the hardness. When you get groundwater that's really hard, it's hard because it's got calcium carbonate in it. The carbonate is what's raising the pH and the calcium is what's raising the hardness. And it's just so commonly found together that it's almost always associated with the higher pH. If you have harder water, you have a higher pH. It just almost always works that way. And today I actually did something almost by accident. I got to thinking about um, this very expensive CalMag solution, calcium and magnesium solution that I use for my house plants because my water is so soft, I don't have any calcium and magnesium in it. And therefore I have to add that to my water. And so since I've been tinkering around with these different substrates that dissolve into water, I got the bright idea I thought was very clever at the time of just taking some of this substrate and putting it in a container of water and letting it sit there. And then when it comes time to feed my plants in a month or whenever, I can use that water that will now have calcium and magnesium dissolved into it. And I can add my plant food to that and I won't have to buy this expensive calcium and magnesium solution anymore. And I thought that was a great idea. But I got to thinking about it for a little while and I realized if I do that, the water in that bucket is going to develop a pH of about 7.8 to 8 over time. And therefore, any plant food that I put in that water will be blocked out by that high pH. And that's where I get into my issue with saying that you can't grow plants in hard water. I always associate the hard water with that higher pH. It's the pH that affects the plant growth, not the water hardness. And so I got to scratching my head about it, and I came up with the idea of doing a very simple experiment of taking my CalMag solution and seeing if that affects my pH, and it doesn't. It affects the water hardness, but it doesn't have any impact on the pH at all. And so I was able to show myself water that has a pH of 6.4, and it's got a hardness off the charts. It had 400 and some, 450 some parts per million uh, CalMag in it, and a 6.4 pH. So we're gonna go over and do that little demonstration now. If you've already heard enough and you don't need to see it, you can stop watching now, I'll say thanks Thanks for watching. But if you actually want to see me do that, I'm going to take some RO water. Well, it's actually my ground water. It's got the 6.4 pH. It's got uh, about 120, 130 parts per million uh, TDS in it. But we're going to start there. We're going to do these additives. We're going to test. We're going to show the pH. And we're just going to go through the whole process real quick. And I'm going to show you how to make acidic hard water. So here we go. All right. Now, this is water directly from my well. I bypassed my water softening system and it is just pure groundwater. So we've got a starting TDS of 120, 121, 120, 119. We're going to call that 120. So we are going to check the pH first of all. 
there's no need to hold this up to the chart because what we're going to do is a comparison to the before and after. So just matching the two pHs side by side will be good enough. But if you're at all familiar with the pH chart, you will know that that pale yellow is about 6.4. So that's what we're starting with. 6.4, 120 parts per million total dissolved solids. And now we are going to test the general hardness. And the way these general hardness tests work, both the general hardness and the carbonate hardness test, work by counting the number of drops you put in the water and whatever number makes the color change happen is the number of drops or is the number of degrees of hardness you have. So we're going to do one drop and typically you should be putting the cap back on this. That's why I'm wearing gloves so I can just use my finger without exposing my skin to the chemicals and you get a color change to a slight sort of orange color. Now the next drop should change it to a slight sort of green color. So that's two degrees. The change from orange to green is the one we were looking for. And that was on drop number two. So we have two degrees hardness. We have a pH of 6.4, 120 parts per million TDS. And we're gonna check carbonate hardness. Although I can already tell you there's gonna be no carbonate hardness. This is gonna be one of those weird tests where the color doesn't actually change. It should change to blue and then change to yellow when you get to the right number of drops. But as you'll see, this is probably going to change to a sort of yellowy color the moment one drop goes in. Say there's no blue at all. That's just sort of a yellowy color. So as far as I can tell, there's no carbonate hardness in that at all. Uh, just to do a... control test to make sure that that carbonate hardness test kit is working. This is my tap water and this should have a little bit of carbonate hardness in it. See blue. That's one drop. And there's two drops turns it back to yellow. So my groundwater has none. There's no the first drop turned it that color yellow. And so again, I don't know if that means it has one degree carbonate hardness or zero degree carbonate hardness, but you just saw what we were dealing with as far as the carbonate hardness. That first drop turned it that yellow color. So we will test that again when we're done. All right. Now. This is my cow mag solution. Four, 203, 205, 206, 207. So we're still climbing a little bit, 206. So just over 200 parts per million. So that little squirt added 80 parts per million to the TDS. Now let's find out what it did to the hardness. Remember the general hardness had two degrees and that's what we're curious to see what happens so we've got the first one it's going to give us that orange color two three four five, six, 
And seven is definitely it. Six looked like it was starting to change it a little bit, but seven is where it fully changed to green. So you just saw we got seven degrees hardness. Now let's check the pH and see if we had any impact whatsoever on the pH because that's what has always baffled me. How do you get hard water and a low pH? And I can add as much as that CalMag solution as I want and make it so that the water is so hard it's off the charts. In fact, I did that when I first got it and started using it. I didn't realize how potent it was, and I started overdosing my plants with calcium and magnesium. Uh, so we're checking the pH now. And the pH is going to be one, two, three drops. And we've got that same pale yellow pH. So no effect on the pH whatsoever and you just saw me increase the TDS by 80 parts per million and we went from two degrees general hardness to four degrees general hardness and since I did not add any carbonates we'll test the carbonate hardness again and if I can not knock stuff over on myself while I'm doing this we should see the same result no carbonate hardness or whatever that first drop is going to turn it yellow first drop turned it yellow so there you go now just for a comparison this is water that I've had sitting with some aragonite in it for about a, uh, no, I refilled this. This has only been sitting here for two days with aragonite in it. So let's see what the pH looks like when we, this is the low range pH. We're probably going to have to test with the high range. One, two, three drops of pH. So very, very different pH when you put aragonite in the water. And since we're here doing this, let's do a hardness test on that aragonite too, because it should give us about the same level of general hardness. We should have about six degrees of hardness, although it's only been two days, so it might not have come up to that degree just yet. There's one that gives us a sort of orange color. Remember, we're looking for a shift to green. There's two three that's kind of shifting to green there at three and four is definitely going to be green so that's after three well two and a half days of that little bit of aragonite and that's not only aragonite that's aragonite and oyster shells mixed together and so that little bit in that glass i can't really turn the glass on its edge to show you but you can see it doesn't even cover the whole bottom of the glass uh in two days that increased the water hardness by about a point uh, a degree, a degree and a half, somewhere around there. The TDS in this is 183, 181, 180. So again, we started with that same water of about 120 parts per million, and now we're up to about 170, 177. So the aragonite definitely will raise the hardness but it also affects your pH greatly. If you use other things that will affect your hardness without affecting your pH, it can be done. And I now got a little better understanding of how to do it. So that's it. I'm going to wrap that up and say thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you're subscribed. I'll see you real soon in the next one.